Summer 1941. With the beginning of Operation Barbarossa, it became quite clear to the attacking German forces that the poor infrastructures of the Soviet Union would have forced them to prioritize the logistics of either the army or the air force. Now, considering the amount of fuel and supplies and ammunition needed to maintain operational the bomber wings of the Luftwaffe, the Axis High Command has therefore ordered since the very beginning of Operation Barbarossa to maintain behind the front line just the fighters and the recon air wings. And so, deprived of its Heinkels, Junkers and Dorniers, how can the Luftwaffe actually support the advance of the ground troops? Well, this is what we will find out in this first special episode. Howdy folks, welcome back to the channel and welcome to this, I would say, first special episode of War in the East 2, which was requested by one of you folks. So, how do you actually manage the Luftwaffe? Uh, not only on the very first turn, but also on the second, and then third, and fourth, and so on, I would say, throughout the entire summer of 1941. Well, it's pretty easy. There is just one type of air mission that you should fly uh, during the offensive phase of 1941. And this mission is the recon mission. Um, I will talk about this naval patrol at the end of the video. But basically the recon mission is um, what you have to do throughout the entire summer. Why? Because uh, if we have a look at uh, what we can actually see, um, well, you see that I can hardly spot any enemy unit. Uh, okay, here I have a mountain unit, an uh, AT unit, an infantry, and uh, an, an, an HQ. There are some units here and there, but overall I have no idea of where the enemy is. And to avoid wasting precious motorized units in just scouting with the, with the ground troops, um, this is where the Luftwaffe really comes um, into play. Um, recon missions. Um, as I mentioned, hopefully I did it in uh, the uh, basic and uh, advanced tutorials. Um, the advantage of recon missions is that they will automatically adjust their altitude based on the equipment of the planes. Now, I'm letting the AI handle the um, individual air wings of my recon missions. Now, I know that the uh, lovers of micromanagement will actually separate uh, into specific AOGs um, all the short range or um, even some people do the based on range, others do it based on the tactical and or strategic, so ba basically on the, on the altitude, um, all the individual um, air groups. I, I, I love micromanagement, but not at this level, so uh, I will just let the AI handle the uh, micromanagement uh, for me. And the, the most useful mission for uh, your air recons um, a recon planes is the interdiction one. Why inter interdiction? Because interdiction allows you to spot where the enemy units are on the map. Um, in contrast, the unit, so the, the type of mission that should give you information about the enemy units, for me, is an absolute garbage, is pure trash. Uh, why is this? Because you will never, ever, ever, ever gain um, enough information um, uh, th that you need to plan your attack. I, I mean, with this mission, you will never find out the enemy attacking and uh, defensive combat values, for instance. Uh, from my tests, uh, what you will see is only um, the uh, the type of... Um, the yeah the the type of of unit that is spotted in this X that's it. I tried everything. I even tried to combine let's say one strike of interdiction to just spot the unit early in the week and then in the later days of the week uh, launch uh, unit um, recon missions. Uh, but nothing. There is absolutely no way to to 
to get the, the intel that you need. The only way to get intel about enemy units is to park one of your units uh, next to an, an enemy one and for at least one week so that uh, during um, the, this week they, ha um, they have time to you know send patrols and scout and, and take prisoners and interrogate them and gather land-based recon on the enemy unit. Um, now, is, is this important um, to, to spend your Air Force on uh, identifying the type of unit? Um, not really, at least not in the early stages of the, of the campaign. Uh, in the uh, very early and early stages, or I would say even throughout the whole 1941 campaign, um, spotting where the enemy units are is your most crucial uh, mission and a crucial objective as well. And so let's have a look at the air, air directives. Um, I like to do two um, assaults in one week into specific regions um, and each, let's say, mission consists of two strikes. Um, it doesn't really matter how many strikes you send, in my opinion and from my experience as well, um, two strikes per, per let's say, per, per mission are sufficient to identify um, the enemy units within this uh, square um, here. The altitude, uh, I've said already that it's, it doesn't matter, and uh, the minimum amount of aircraft and escorts, I like to play with between 20 and 30 aircraft uh, per mission. And um, yeah, I, as I said, I will let the AI uh, handle the air groups uh, for me. And if you now have a look at the overall uh, directives this is how the uh, the situation looks like it's okay could be worse and could be better um also it's important to to note um yeah like the staging base um the staging base is where uh, the airfield in which all of your planes like in this case a recon and fighters will kind of regroup and from from here they will launch the actual mission for instance as you can see here i have um so the i would say the air force high command uh, also known as the ai selected minsk as its operational base uh, sorry as is as its staging base for this air recon mission uh, and as you can see it's kind of pointless because um the bulk of the hexes here were not protected by the escort fighters. So uh, what I can do is to select maybe this one here, uh, this the base of Ulla, and um, as you can see now the, the situation has dramatically improved uh, for me because now my fighters by taking off from Ulla will be able to cover the bulk of my recon planes. Um, there is just one limitation in doing this, um, that your planes will take fuel and supplies and ammunition from the staging base, which means that if the staging base is empty, they might uh, run out of fuel uh, before they have completed all of their missions. So um, it's a risk, so take this into account when um, planning your um, air recon missions. And last but not least, the naval patrol. Um, the the naval, naval patrol mission here is um, useful in um, isolating the area of Ventspils, um, uh, Kurland, yeah, this is the Kurland uh, area, and uh, basically prevents the AI from evacuating those few units that you will drop on the first week of Operation Barbarossa via Ventspils. And, um, you know, it's always nice to um, to isolate this port here on the on the very early, st early stages of the war. Uh, and then, um, yeah, let's have a look at the naval patrol. So I like to set it um, on day one, day three, day five, and day seven. Uh, and then again, just let the AI handle this, um, the air missions um, uh, here requ requested by me. And um, yeah, so basically that was it. Now we can have a look at the um, development of the... Um, oh my god. The... the, the um, air face. And actually I was thinking maybe... Uh, let's see if we can improve the situation. Uh, staging base Lutsk. 
Um, so in this case, I think I will go with zero. Because I... I don't want to set partial escorts, because for me they are like... Useless, as I've discussed in uh, one of my... Maybe here, because I... So actually, I never tested if the mission will not fly if there is just one X. Um, um, let's say that cannot be covered by the fighters. So let's actually have a look at um, partial escorts. Okay, yeah, recon, yes. Okay, perfect. So they should they should fly. And um, yeah, with this, let's have a look at the. Um, Um, yep, I was just checking why there was one, okay, yeah, let's see, let's see how many losses we have and what, what can we actually identify by flying these uh, missions, I mean, so far we have three losses in uh, air combat versus 18 of the enemy, which is okay, I mean, um, it could always go worse. And um, yeah, it's, it's crucial to have fighters to prevent the, the enemy fighters from harassing your planes. Because as I said many times, the recon planes for the Axis players are the most valuable flying assets ever. You have to protect them at all costs. Uh, naval patrol, okay, damage interdiction. Uh, let's see, did we lose any... None from the Luftflotte 1. Oh, we lost some from the Luftflotte 2. Ah, okay, so only um, six from the second air fleet. Um, which is okay, I mean. And uh, let's now have a look and ta-da! Look at what happened, now we see pretty much uh, what we wanted to see. Even better, now we even know um, some type of enemy units, like infantry, armor, um, security, so the ADN, KVD, and um, uh, yeah, um, airborne and mountain rifle divisions, and even the um, marines. I think this is um, just a brigade, because I know the Soviets only have naval infantry brigades so now we, we with this knowledge we can even know um we know that okay this is just a brigade so we could even push here um as i think i did in the um episode of two weeks ago um but yeah let's say um this shows you the the, the power of the air recon missions uh, at the price of just six planes six planes uh this is the amount of intel that that we got and it gives us an idea of ideally where to push with the panzers and uh, with the motorized infantry. As my voice is abandoning, abandoning me for today, I would say, folks, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. I wish you all the best. And uh, as always, stay tuned for uh, more regular episodes. And uh, if you want, um, I might do more special episodes, as always. Let me know in the comments here below if, if there are any topics that I, I, you would like me to cover during the Grand Campaign, and uh, I'll be happy to cover them. Um, yeah, that's it, folks. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all again next week.